What we have here is an annual tradition. It started when it made more sense. Um, I think it was Bruce yesterday saying, I want to bet on how many times the number of original attendees or attendees of the original Ruby conference comes up at this conference. So I'm going to bring it up for, I don't know, the nth time. And I, I bet it N, so I'm going to win. Um, so the original conference had like three people. It was me, Rich, Matts, I think, right? No. Uh, 2001 in Tampa. Um, but since, since the very first Ruby conference, we've been doing a Q&A town hall. Uh, this is the first time we called it a town hall. We actually round table, right? Round table was just a bit of a stretch. So a round table discussion with Mats. Um, we're going to do a town hall tonight because we've got 500-ish people here. And Rich and I are going to help moderate. Um, but the idea is you get to ask Matt's anything Ruby-related you'd like to ask him. Ruby-related. Ruby-related. Key, right? <laughs> um, but we have 500 people, so if you, if you start talking from your seats, we're going to yell at you because we have to be orderly about this. So if you want to ask a question, go over there and we'll be nice to you. You'll ask the question on the podium. Um, make a line. Anything Ruby-related you want or software development-related, I guess. Ruby. Yeah? Uh, so if you want to go ahead and get started moving over there, um, I guess I should officially actually introduce Mats. Here we have Yukihiro Matsumoto, creator of the Ruby language. I think you all knew that, but let's give him a round of applause. Okay. So we're going to be really informal, except for the fact that you must be over there or you will be punished. Is this the largest crowd you've ever been in front of? <clears throat> Just a question. Hmm? Matt? The largest crowd? Is it the largest crowd? Is this the largest Ruby crowd you've no. ever been in front of, Matt? No, you guys can come yeah, up here. Yes. We'll just kind of line up here. I used to speak in the, the Sun Users Group in Japan, which was in the, about 1,000 people. That's not Ruby related, though. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. But I I presented about Ruby. All right, <laughs> okay. awesome. Okay, so come on. I have a question, and I need to understand uh, about. I'm sorry. My name is Steve Downey. I'm with Gulf Coast Digital Systems, and we have developed a command and control system for media players over the internet that uses exclusively Ruby. It works very well, and I love the language. Thank you. I'm a little bit concerned about one issue, and that happens to be backwards compatibility. I installed 1.9 and ran it on my program, mm -hmm. and it immediately broke. And it broke for what I consider to be a very bad reason. Mm -hmm. And it's because they took a library file function called file.exists and changed it to file.exist. That should not break code that already works. And what I, is your question? It, my question is, how will Ruby, going forward as a serious developer's language, pay attention to backwards compatibility, and how, much, how important is it? And if it needs more people to be involved in testing, or in developing compatibility libraries that can be included to make sure that it doesn't break existing code, how should that be handled? Uh, to keep the compatibility, <coughs> the, we sometimes we need to break compatibility for some reasons, and uh, and I try to make them as as less as possible, and and. Uh, Fortunately, the, the, the file exists method is one of them. Yeah. And it was introduced in the, the very old era, and maybe pre-1.0 era, and the, the, I should have removed it more earlier, but I don't know. I, I think I put the, the, the war, Deprecation warning, I guess. I didn't, did I? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
the one one nine is the 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 place to make uh, some kind of backward incompatible change, and uh, we are not going to add it. That major break anymore in the near future. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm John Powers. Uh, I work at Texas Instruments in the calculator division. I am investigating putting Ruby as a scripting language in our new line of calculators. Uh, <laughs> Our legal department does not like the GNU license on the Reg, on the, on the regex package. Uh, I'm looking at 1.9. It looks like maybe it does, it's not encumbered by the GPL license. Uh, when will 1.9 be production ready? Or uh, I, I'm not sure what the what the right term is. If if you're going straight to 2.0 or you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for something that I can put in our product that's not encumbered by the GPL license. Mm -hmm. G? Encumbered. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, the first question is uh, when is when will become the 1.9 production ready? It's, I I I'm not sure, but, but it's going to be out for the next Christmas. <laughs> But it's not going to be as stable as I expected. <laughs> but uh, it will be the the, uh, the feature stable, but the the level of the implementation would not be as stable as a the production ready. And uh, uh, but n if no one uses, it, it's it's not going to be as stable. <laughs> so so okay. try one point one nine and. Uh, Report bugs and defeat, um, miss, missed features, and uh, let us fix it as soon as uh, Christmas of 2007. Yeah, this Christmas. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. People. <laughs> no one wants to ask him a question. All right. Yeah. We'll eventually have too many questions, I guarantee. Okay, now the flood begins. Stop being cowards. Look right. at him. He's not a coward. Coming up. <laughs> Hello. I, um, I'm Brent Roman with uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium mm -hmm. Research Institute. Uh, we pre I presented a couple years ago about that strange robot in, under the water using Ruby. And it's still out there, and it's still uh, on occasion. We actually do deploy it for a month or so at a time, and it mostly works. Um, <laughs> when it doesn't, it's usually, some, it's usually some strange robotic bit that's failed. But my question is, um, I've been, I was experimenting with moving it from 1.68, and I've managed just recently, like days before the show here, to get it up and running on 1.86. My original goal was to get it up and running on 1.9, figuring I would just not mess with 1.86. I'd skip a release. Um, the, I ran into a an interesting issue, and a, a, the, the, the code was actually running slower on 1.9, by about 5% or so. Mm -hmm. And everybody was touting these, these uh, figures of two and three times, or at least in 50% improvement on things that weren't synthetic benchmarks. So I started to look at the actual virtual machine as best I could. I don't pretend to really understand the guts. But when I, as, I, as I started to look at it, I came away with the understanding that um, it's still spending all the same amount of time doing method uh, lookup, and it's still spending the same amount of time um, building objects. And if, but it's highly optimized for fixed nums and for a, a couple classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what happens is that if you're, if you're doing operations on things that aren't those classes, then not only do you, uh, yet the, act, the optimizations actually pay a, uh, exact a little bit of a premium because you make all these little tests to see is it this special case, is it that special case, right in the guts of the dispatch. And so I'm wondering if anybody's given any thought to um, an idea of changing, for instance, fix nums so that they're closed, so that when you do a fix num operation, it always produces a fix num. It can't expand to a big num. Um, and then allowing that, then you could do a whole host of optimizations because then you could actually say, 
this fixed num will always be a fixed num. So I could, if I have a whole op set of operations on them in a row, I can just almost inline them using some of the JIT technologies we've seen. So I'm just ideas, and I guess what I'm looking at is more aggressive optimization ideas that bend the language a little bit. Because I, what I see is that we really can't do a lot more with it, and, I, and the creator of, uh, of the VM has said as much, that without, without changing Ruby, he, he can't do a lot more. So uh, just if you, like, if you could talk about that a bit. Well, the, 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 the Koichi and the other VM implementer will understand you, and uh, I hesitate for the, to bend the language for the performance. Just because, you know, the, the flexibility wins at, at the end, I guess, I believe. So, so even though the, it makes the optimization, optimization difficult, you know, it, it still, the language still needs to be as flexible as it can, so, but, you know, but, like, uh, the YAV does some kind of the, the fixed number optimization by checking the, the, the flag that, that tells you the, the fixed number class is not modified from the, the original. So, that can, that kind of trick can be used for the, for the other optimization as well. So, okay. So, so, so it's not. So it's really more the, of a question for the, an, the answer is that I'm not going to bend the language for the, for the for the sake of performance. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Russ Olson. I'm with FGM. And first, thank you for Ruby. You're welcome. <laughs> and I, I, you know, in the in the past couple of years, we've seen. Uh, um, Many implementations of Ruby, um, many virtual machines that'll run Ruby, uh, JRuby and Iron Ruby. And I was just wondering um, what you think about that. Do you like the competition, or do you think it's um, a good thing for Ruby? I would mm -hmm. just like to get your reaction. Uh, uh, the implementing the, the Ruby language is very really pretty tough job. That I try to, for example, my. Some of you may know, may heard the, the word write, right, RIT, which is the, 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 the first class re-implementation of the, the Ruby language. And, at, and I have to confess that I failed. So it, it's a tough job even, even for me. So it's kind of the, uh, incredible to, for the Charles and other people to implement the Ruby on JVM. And, uh, or the, the Ion Ruby, or the, the Ruby News, or the other implementation. It, it's, it's, just, it's just wonderful. It, 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 they just did the, the incredible job, so I just, I just want to compliment them to, to accomplish that great thing. And uh, I feel pretty positive about the, the JRuby and the, the other imp, imp, Ruby implementations. Just because you know the, the, they open up the, the new world for the, the people for that who couldn't use Ruby for various reasons. Just because you know the the, the boss doesn't allow that language. It's not that it's not it's not on JVM or the, the who really wants the, the, the Java APIs from the Ruby language. Or, and then it just the by and the, what by this diversity and the Ruby language can be spread and uh, make more people happy. So I'm very pretty appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Jeff Parsons, and I just want to say you know code Ruby be happy has been something that's stuck with me, and uh, I try to live by that. And in light of that, my question was, uh, is working on Ruby still something that makes you happy? Do you find joy in it? And if so, what's the most enjoyable part of the experience up to this point? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I started 
the development will be in 1993, 14 years ago, and uh, the one of the the sub subjects of the development, one of the targets of the development is the to become to to enjoy myself. So enjoying, I enjoy pro programming in Ruby, and and at the same time I enjoy designing it and. And, and also, I enjoy the implementing it. it. It's pretty fun to implement the language by myself. So I have been pretty much enjoying for these years, and I still enjoying it very much. Hi, I'm just a guy. Um, I have <laughs> I have two questions. Uh, they're related, though. Uh, my first question is, what is the Ruby community and like presence like in Japan? Mm -hmm. The the Ruby community is the, in Japan is pretty yeah, pretty much same for for like people like this. Yeah, they are the the fun and nice people and they uh, one inter interested in the, the new technology and uh, um, what it does. Yeah, they're, they're good people. And uh, the ratio of the working full time for Ruby, the Ruby related job is a little bit lower than the one that in the States. The what is lower? So I didn't hear you. Less people, less people earning money from Ruby mm -hmm. in Japan. Well, okay, then that leads into my next question. Like uh, here in America, the Ruby community has is increased drastically over the last two years, mm -hmm. and so now that you have like the TI legal department like wondering about your license for your language, <laughs> I'm wondering like, do you feel that pressure? In, like, does that ever reach you where you are, or does it, do you still uh, feel separate from it all there? Uh, so yeah, people are contacting me as uh, the, the legal stuff or the, the making NDA with me or something. And, but uh, basically, I I left myself let me concentrate on the language development, not to say enterprise issues for the, the, <laughs> yeah, keep uh, keeping away from the the enterprise contracting issues. Mm. All right, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Matt. It's Joe from Edgecase. Um, thank you, because you've shown us that with powerful tools, we can do a lot of really powerful things. Um, we have some unfortunate issues arising in our company where um, people have you know, stopped realizing that powerful tools give you powerful results. So I was hoping you could help settle something. What editor do you use? <laughs> Emacs. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Apple needs to get him that Mac now. <laughs> Hi, Mots. Charlie from JRuby. Um, I'm wondering uh, when we can expect a final 1.9 specification or feature list. Because we're we're very interested in starting to make changes to JRuby to support all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the language features are almost fixed, yeah, except for the the the, col the corner teeny things, and uh, the the part of the multilingualization, yeah, Unicode handling, and uh, I'm now in the process of the auditing of the. One nine changes for years. Like the, I just reverted the name error being the subclass of the script er, script error, mm. but I, I just put back that in, in under the the standard error, and uh, I I I'm gonna reverse some of the one nine changes in this in a in in a two in a week or two. And uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe before the middle of this month, 
the, the feature will be basically fixed. Okay, great, thank you. Hey, I'm Matthew Bass. I'm a freelance Ruby developer. I get paid to do what I love every day. Thank you so much for that. Um, my question for you was, when it comes to the creation of Ruby, do you primarily consider yourself a scientist or an artist, and why? Uh, hobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, yeah, it really it was my hobby job, hobby project, and uh, I didn't expect this, this to be happen. It's, it's, it's far beyond my expectation. I, when I designed Ruby in, back in 1993, I, I made my own, my own toy language and the, the, some of my friends used and the, the, then that's what I expected, you know, that maybe 10, 500 users of the language now, we have 500 people gathered around the, the states or the, even the worldwide, and uh, I don't know. I don't know how to count the, the whole Ruby users in the worldwide. Maybe the tens of thousands of the, the hundreds of thousand people using Ruby now. It's just incredible. <laughs> it's just far beyond my expectation. Thank you. Hi, Matt. I'm Chris. I wrote the Ambition Gem that Jim Weiber talked about this morning. And I was wondering if you ever have or would consider exposing the parse tree to normal Ruby programs like Ryan Davis's parse tree gem does. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> parse tree. What shall I do, Koichi? <laughs> Let me re restate my question. What? What shall we do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the first thing is pretty the, the implementation dependent. So the exposing it as a, the spec, you know, that, that might be pretty tough for us to what to what take. For in the future, you know, the, with around the new first tree or the change the change structure of the first tree, the that API would be changed a lot. So it's it's kind of reason I hesitated to to, to expose the first tree to the to the public. But right. maybe we have to consult with Ryan and the others about the first tree later. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hi, Matt. So I'm Darren. Um, I remember a couple of years ago that uh, you mentioned you pay attention to other languages to learn from them, and at the time you mentioned I/O and Haskell. I'm just curious if there are any languages that you're you're paying uh, other languages you're paying attention to at the moment. Recently? Yes. Uh, the Alan. <laughs> Let. Last RubyCon, the, the Twitch shows us the, the Alan video, and it, it was pretty interesting. I, I, to confess that I, I don't really like the language syntax, but mm -hmm. its concept is pretty interesting in Alan. And uh, some kind of the, the, what, the distributed the programming language like the, the source in, in, from Google or some other some other language from AT&T AT or other companies is uh, pretty interesting, but it's not open yet. So the, the, the R is the language of choice for this year uh, from, for me. And uh, maybe the Sazo or the Hancock would, is the, the language for next year. Thank you. Hi, uh, someone made a comment earlier regarding the ability to optimize Ruby, the virtual machine, and that there was nothing left to do. And I was kind of shocked by that comment because uh, I had recently talked to 
one of the uh, lead developers on the VisualWorks team, and he talked about two technologies, uh, polymorphic inline caching mm -hmm. and dynamic optimization um, as techniques that are used in the small talk world to really squeeze out every last drop. And I was wondering if you've looked at those, where they are on your radar screen, et cetera. Did I say there's no room for optimization? I don't think you said it, he said it, although you didn't disagree, so I, I just wanted to <laughs> uh, uh, see where you stood on, on at least those two technologies, and mm -hmm. if you're interested. Yeah, I, I, know, I know these technologies, and uh, it can be applied to the Ruby, and, uh, but it's, right now the, the, the optimization is out of my hands, and uh, his hand, or the, the other hand, so the, so, I Yeah, he said if, if, if he can, he, I, he wants to apply these optimization techniques to the Yao. So. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke Kniss. I'm the author of Puppet. Um, I, one of the things I'm most excited about in Leopard is that it's the first operating system that ships with a Ruby that has Dtrace built in. And I'm really interested in using Dtrace to help, help my Ruby programs go faster. And I'm wondering if you or anybody in the core Ruby team has spent time with Dtrace using it to pay more attention to how Ruby actually works from the outside. Mm -hmm. Or if you're even familiar with Dtrace. I've, I've never used Dtrace by myself. And uh, I don't know. Maybe we have to use the the, uh, the Dtrace to optimize the, the language. I'm not even, I mean, for me, it's, I'm going to use it to optimize. I'm just. I know what it, the little I've done with it has shown me. It's given me a lot more understanding of what's happening internally. Even, the, even mm -hmm. though I know the code paths, seeing it from the outside ends up looking very different. So I was just curious if you guys were spending time on it. But <coughs> thank you. Yeah, I used all profile from in Linux on Linux to to check the the, the profile, and uh, it helped me. And Dtrace is even more helpful. Dtrace is kind of weird because it's not it's not a normal profiling application, so it ends up being mm -hmm. very different from normal profiling, I guess, because it's it's kernel mediated, so you're paying attention to what's happening in the kernel. So, anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Mats. My name is Michael Newman. Um, I'm, from Germ uh, I'm from Europe. So my question is, do you want to join us next year at the European Ruby Conference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't make it this year just because it's a week after this, this conference. You know. Really? It's you come to uh, Vienna? <laughs> no, no, n not this time. Not this year, but next not year? This. Maybe. Maybe, okay. And the two conferences are too close, you know. Yeah, the we'll, we'll one in the States, yeah. I mean, I'm in Japan, one in the States, one in Europe, and it's a very close week. So it's kind of tough for me, myself, and then my family. So yeah. if, you, if you have the, some, maybe once in a month, <laughs> month maybe a month in Tovo or something. It, it, could, it could be quite possible. Okay, we'll find a different date for the mm -hmm. European Ruby Conference. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the many people ask me to, to give a presentation in uh, the, their conference, the, like they post them in the Belgium, and uh, the, some, some open source conference in Brazil, or the, in, in the States. But I just can't make it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'll try next year. Thank you. Hi, Mats. My name is Keith Bennett. Um, thank you also for Ruby. Um, a couple of questions. One thing is Rails has propelled Ruby. I mean, it's done a lot to, to boost the popularity of Ruby. My first question is, do you see any other kind of um, technology or, or niche or, or special purpose use that could um, boost Ruby in a similar way as Rails has done. The other technology that, that yeah. could boost Ruby? Right, like Rails, um, uh, Rails has boosted the use of Ruby because it's a mm -hmm. special, it's, it's a tool for a special 
task mm -hmm. that Ruby is especially good in, in doing. I was just wondering if, if, if you have in your mind any other kind of task like web frameworks or, you know, um, that might do a similar thing <coughs> that, that might also, you know, people say, wow, this is great. You know, this is another re great reason to use Ruby because there's this other thing in another mm -hmm. market the, or area. Mm -hmm. Me and the colleague just started to work on some kind of the distributed the, the multi-core or the, the cluster the application within in Ruby. So the, the interactive handling of the huge data on the, the cluster machine can be next p next battlefield of the language. And Interesting. I want I want to do something for I, I myself do something for that field. Interesting, thank you. Um, my second question is, um, with all this enthusiasm that we, we all have about Ruby, do you ever look at something we're doing and say, well, maybe Ruby isn't the best tool for that job? You know, is, is there, do you have any guidance as to, you know, where we might be using Ruby more, where we might be using Ruby less, that kind of thing? With Ruby might not suitable for some task, but what is the question? Well, okay, like for example, some people in the Java world in particular mm -hmm. will say Ruby is great for developing fast prototypes, fast applications, Rails, something like that, but there can also be benefits for something that you can check at compile time, um, like Java, um, that because of the flexibility of Ruby, um, it's easier for um, um, people to write code that might be not understandable to others, yeah, it, it, how well it scales to a, a really large team. You know, maybe a multi-year project with 10 or 20 or 50 people. Mm -hmm. Do you see Ruby as being as strong in that kind of use as it is in, in the smaller um, project? Well, it, Ruby has some kind of weakness in the, the, the project of the huge mem team, team members, like the, the 100 mm -hmm. people working on the same project, mm -hmm. like, but I don't know, the, the, the rule, rule of the game is changing, you know, that in the most field, the required people is getting smaller and smaller using the more effective tool, so, mm, good point. like, it, yeah, Java still shines in the, the, the huge, the large scale enterprise, something, something software, but, <laughs> but the, the, the most of the, the, the application, mostly, especially on web, is getting smaller than the, the quicker. So the Ruby still shines on there. And then yes. the using other, some tools and the, the, the what, the discipline and the, the reliability of the, the software, software can be what? Increased. Improved. Yeah, improved. In, okay. And then w I, want, I want to ad address these kind of the, the, the te team co coordination on a large scale system. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of the task for the Ruby 2.0 or the, the next. Mm -hmm. The, the version next to one nine. So, so I wanted to sometimes the, the the class namespace things or the or mm -hmm. maybe we 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 are gonna talk about that in the, the small keynote. But the, it's kind of the task we I wanted to address in the I future. See. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, my name's Trotter. And in your essay for Beautiful Code, you wrote that one of the things that makes code beautiful is it being familiar. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there's anything that you have wanted to implement in Ruby but have not because you wanted to keep things familiar and not go too far outside the box to alienate people. Is, Pardon? Is <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, in Beautiful Code, in the essay mm -hmm. you wrote for that book, you said that one of the things that makes code beautiful is it being familiar. Mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering if there's anything in Ruby that you have not done because you wanted to make sure that Ruby stayed familiar. Mm -hmm. I is there anything? Well, the, the, the pro 
probably the, the center of the beauty of the Ruby, the language, is the, it's the one step ahead from the, the ordinary people. The, just, just one step ahead of it. For example, the, the, I don't know, the Lisp or the small talk or the Haskell or the, some kind of that advanced language with way step ahead of you, yeah, I, mean, I mean me. <laughs> so it's kind of tough for, for uh, the ordinary people like me to understand the, its beauty. But the Ruby is just one step ahead of me or the ordinary people. So we can understand it and uh, understand it and by following its, its, its tradition or the, the culture, the, we can make it, we can grow one step ahead. So that's the beauty of the language. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm Ed Baraski. Uh, those uh, who don't recognize me because I cut all my hair off. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have two questions. Uh, the, the first one is, what is your second favorite programming language? <laughs> my second favorite programming language? Uh, huh? <laughs> Ruby? <laughs> yeah, the Ruby is my, my best favorite language. I, I love all programming language except for several. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, what? Well, well, Lisp? C? Lisp, yeah. Um. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I named Lisp and C. Okay. Uh, and the second question is what would you take out of Ruby? What, what what do you think is in there that doesn't need to be in there? Take what, what to remove from yeah. Ruby? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what should <laughs> uh, Maybe nothing. Maybe, maybe, probably, probably, probably there are several things to, to be removed, but I just, just, think, just can't think of any right now. Hi, Matt. So Bill Kleb from NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for Ruby. I say that every year I see you. Um, I guess Ed sort of stole my question already. It has to do with the Toyota production system, which has you know, enabled car companies like Toyota to take over the planet in terms of producing, you know, very high quality, low cost things. And I was just wondering if you've ever studied the Toyota production system and the concepts in it of lean production in terms mm -hmm. of how you develop your software, in terms of when you find an error, you stop the production line and you make sure that error never happens again or that type of error. And also the idea of sort of Ed's question of, you know, there's what the seven different kinds of muda or waste or whatever. And um, do you ever consider that like when you're developing Ruby or, or libraries and so forth? Because I've heard rumors like in Ruby core that, that you guys are talking about punting a lot of the sort of the standard libraries out into maybe gems or something to try to strip mm -hmm. down what you're sending out at the moment, so. The, the lean software de development or the, the, I, I find myself surprised when I see the, the similar principle in the, the Linux software develop, development or the agile programming. And it, I didn't, I didn't would co coordinate it with them. So just, it's just coincidence or the, the yeah, good principle shares with the, independently, that happens in, uh, independently. So the, it's pretty interesting. And it, yes. <laughs> Hi, Matt, uh, Evan Phoenix. Um, I, have, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, so did, uh, are continuations in or out in 1.9? Uh, 
you have to require additional liability to use continuity in one nine. So it's officially out from the core language, I guess. Okay, but still in. But in general. Yeah, but we yeah. One nine can use continuation by requiring external liability. Okay. Um, the other question I had was, um, would you, um, you know, uh, it, for Rubinius, we've been developing a lot of specs for one eight, and you know, would you have you given much thought into a way that we could work towards sanctioning those to say like this is one eight? I know this may be the time since it feels like a lot of things are moving on towards one nine, but some of us are still working towards one eight. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this is a time since it feels like it's, it's calmed down and it, it maybe it has stabilized that we could work something out uh, <laughs> in that mm -hmm. arena. But the 1-8 spec is basically fixed. But, but, so but, but the question is what is the 1-8 spec? The 1-8-6? Uh, <laughs> no, right, right. No, but I mean... <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, that, 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 it's, 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 it's kind of time to start some kind of big document. The watch. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I mean, but, you know, you, you can lean on us because, you know, for Rubinius, we've been going through and doing all, most of that work in terms of, you know, finding out, okay, the, these are the things that this method does and these are the things that this one does mm -hmm. on a very precise level to say that this is the, this is the general overview of the Ruby universe in 186. So mm -hmm. there's not... From your perspective, there may be very little to do other than to put the Matt stamp of approval on it. <laughs> yeah. Executable specs, yeah. <laughs> not 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 uh, implied spe specification. Mm -hmm. So, you could think about it what? if you want. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I didn't I'm mean to put you on the you spot. <laughs> It, yes, it is or something. <laughs> well, the, we recently formed the Ruby Association in Japan, and the, the, we still being the, the teeny organization, but some, we getting some kind of responses. But, so we got, when we got enough resource, we, we are going, we are planning vaguely planning to organize the, the fixing the spec both for 1.9 and 1.8. Okay. And, uh, and until then, we, we can help each, each other to, like, the, like you, you are going to make a, the, the test, test suite mm -hmm. for 1.8. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we can help and correspond and help okay. each other. Well, I guess I look forward to when you're ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chuck Leduc. Uh, a question around uh, parallelism. We, we're kind of out of, we're out of gigahertz. We're not getting many more of those, and we're getting lots of processor cores. So in terms of parallelism, what are plans, or is that an interest for you with the language? Uh, basically, the, the parallelism is done in the, 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 I don't know, the processes. I mean the, the separated memory memory space, and the 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 the, the core even in one one nine does not have the the what fang lane parallelism just because of the the giant integrity lock, but you know the the forking processes and the, the distributing tasks between the, the processes can can accomplish the the, the multiple utilization and it, the quality is, is now working in the multi VM on the on the, on the process so so that we can distribute it the 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 tasks in a one process one one VM or thread and uh, utilize the multi -service. We We can have several options. We have several options, and we, we are working on it. Okay. 
Thanks. Phew. <laughs> Any other questions? Chad? <laughs> Go ahead. You have to come over to this. No, you don't need to. Go ahead and use that mic. No. All right. Show myself. See? I stepped on the mic cord, as I said, stepped on the mic cord. I'm Chad Fowler. Um, for several years, you talked about a feature that you wanted to add to Ruby 2 called selector namespaces, uh -huh. which was, in my understanding, a way to... Uh, in a, a context-specific way to do things like override the behavior of existing methods so that it could be done safely in a system. Um, what are your thoughts on that now? Uh, the, the select namespace is pretty tough to implement the efficiently, so that's the, the, the biggest obstacle to implement it. But it's still in the to-do list for the, one, the Ruby 2. So that actually brings up another question then, since there's no one else here. Um, I'm just going to ask questions for the next 30 minutes, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, uh -uh. <laughs> what is the difference between 1.9 and 2.0? Uh, 1.9 is the kind of the, the transition out to the 1, to the 2.0. That's because, you know, the, every, the most major backward incompatibility it, would be introduced in the 1.9. So the Ruby 2 will be a, a basically an enhancement without the, any major backward compatibility for, for um, scalability. I mean, it is the, the, the features to, for the large scale development or something. <laughs> Hi. Um, is there anything new or that you're doing or that you want to do besides Ruby or uh, at the same time as Ruby? Is there any new projects or anything on your mind? Uh, well, I, I'm interested in a lot of things, but I don't really have the ability to accomplish it. So recently, I'm, work, I'm working on the, the, the mail reader, the, which is basically uh, the Gmail on the laptop. And uh, it, it, it is an on Emacs. <laughs> and it's working. <laughs> an, an Emacs mail reader? Yeah, uh, yeah, e yeah, mail reader working on Emacs and half implemented the half in Emacs list and the half in Ruby. All right, thanks. I'm Rich Kilmer. And uh, I have a quick question for you. Is there anything that you would like to see someone in the community create for Ruby that you just don't have time to do, but you'd really like to have done? Uh huh. Maybe. <coughs> Other than selector mm -hmm. namespaces. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, some of you may remember the, the last year's keynote, Dyke said talk. And uh, we, as I encouraged uh, the, some kind of the TV edge corner, the enhancement talk, and that was just because that was fun. But, you know, it, it didn't really work out. Mostly, mostly due to, for me. And uh, I think it's about time to, for us to set up the, the kind of the, the collaboration center for, for Ruby development, like the, the, you know, the, the rails have its truck, truck, truck site, and, the, and I don't know, Python has its roundup site or something. We, we need to better the issue tracking and the, the bug reports and the, the repository managing site. But I'm, I don't want it to be run on track, I mean, on Python. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maybe some of you, some of you, <laughs> can uh, raise your hand in the volunteer to set up the good site and to to some kind of the organ, organizing our uh, the development efforts for the core Ruby. 
Okay. Um, so you've lovingly come to be called sort of the benevolent dictator in the Ruby community. Um, I don't know if, I don't think you probably called yourself that, but someone, it, it sort of came about. And I've noticed that there's, I, I wouldn't necessarily call them competitor, competitor versions or flavors of Ruby, but other projects with differing interests or goals, or many goals in common, have come about like JRuby and Rubinius. And I'm wondering if these projects have um, taken some of your control away as the benevolent dictator of the Ruby community and how you feel about that. And also, I'm wondering if it makes more work for you because suddenly you have somebody saying, when are we going to get a spec for <laughs> 1.9 and how you feel about that? Well, I consider myself not as a dictator, but uh, you are humble servants. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's kind of weird feeling, you know, the, the, suddenly some people consider myself for responsible for the creating language. Perhaps the yeah, maybe designing a language is a sin, and uh, you, if you design a language, uh, you will be the punished. <laughs> 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 the two soldiers to, to sitting the, the the in front of the people like this. <laughs> but but you know, the, considering the the fun and the enjoyment out of the the language development, it's kind of the, the cost I have to pay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Questions? Anyone? Did I we can broaden questions? it beyond Ruby if you want to. <laughs> we have time for about 46 more questions. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, last call, we don't need to wear... Oh. Is this oh, a question? Wait, you're or running? Are you, just... are you running? Okay. Run, dude. All right. Here? No. <laughs> uh, hi, my name's Tamara. I'm from ThoughtBot in Boston. And I was just curious if you see a difference in the coding style between code that's written uh, in the United States or in Europe and code that's written uh, by Japanese coders. I don't know. I, I just don't focus on the the the, food, uh, the country living living the the author living. I just don't know. And uh, oh, recently the in the Ruby community in Japan was very called golfing is very popular. So the. The, the Ruby calls from Japan, Ruby users tend to be more shorter <laughs> these huh. days. Huh. Thank you. I'm Luke again. Are you involved in getting Ruby working or added to any distributions? I think in, it's in most of the distributions now, but it's only just starting to get, you know, OS 10 is, this is the first release that's officially, mm -hmm. you know, a fully supported um, language. Are you involved in working with the distributions or the le the operating systems or the the vendors at all, or is that entirely separate? Is there and if you're not involved, is there a group of people in the community who is kind of dedicated to making sure that Ruby not just isn't just available on these platforms, but is actually supported and works well and is kind of done well? Mm -hmm. yeah, I I didn't work for the any Leopard Ruby and Lowland somewhere right. <laughs> is is responsible and uh, but apple offered me or offered us for help to more better integration to the uh, operating system and uh, i agreed to to work on them work with them so the the will be on next next OS 10 is will be much even better what about other I platforms think. Mm -hmm. What about other platforms like Solaris and the 98,000 Linuxes and the 48 BSDs? I mean, 
there, there, are, there are lots of operating systems out there. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, I have a project that I'm, I'm working with package maintainers and the starting to work with some vendors to get my package on the, on the operating systems. And so I know how complicated it is to do it effectively. And so I'm wondering how, how that's done in the Ruby community, I guess. I'll go back. Could you translate? <laughs> Working with package uh, managers and package maintainers and like Linux distributions and mm -hmm. FreeBSD mm -hmm. and how to integrate Ruby into those environments. Mm -hmm. So we 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 talk with the other the pack, package manager like the like from in FreeBSD or the Debian people. Uh, the the Debian Ruby manager is the, is my personal friend. So. So we are working on it, but okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm David Kuntz. I had a question. Um, you've mentioned several years now that you're you've looked into I/O, and that's one of the languages that you mentioned. And uh, you know, one of the most compelling features of I/O is that there's no keywords in the whole language. Go a little bit slower, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, w one of the main features of I/O is that there's no keywords in the language, and I was wondering. Since you've been looking into that, is that something you'd ever consider for Ruby? Sort of, uh, you know, most of Ruby is methods, and you can do a lot with overriding those methods. Mm -hmm. But then, every once in a while, you run into something. We had a talk earlier today where you run into problems because you can't sort of intercept the double at symbol because that's a keyword or the, like the and keyword. And I was just wondering if that's something, a direction you could ever see Ruby going, where everything was a method. There was no keywords in the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I O is a pretty interesting language, but it's not the way that Ruby is going. Okay, thank yeah. you. Hi, I'm David. I had a question about your experience in uh, nurturing the Ruby community and how it's grown and changed, and you know your role in that, and any advice you would give to people who want to start an open source project and how they can nurture it along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, community management is a pretty tough task, but I was lucky to that we the very the nice people like Chapier came in to the and the, the household and came came in and uh, when some kind of the well what do you call it nasty guy or the, the nice guy they can say why would we do something 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 in the, in the, in the strong words and. The, the the how Fulton came in and that the, the, don't be like that <laughs> then we, and uh, that that's the uh, lucky we can have the people like that in the community and uh, it's the same thing happened in the Japanese community as well so the like the uh, gathering nice people like the, is the key to the community management I guess. Yeah. A quick follow-up, have you found certain technologies help the communication work better? Do you have a preference for source control? Do you have a preference? I mean, like, some people are looking at Git now. Didn't know technology? Um, yeah, like, for example, Git uh, that Linus Torvalds uses. Is that something that you could see being helpful? Well, maybe, but I'm not sure the, the, the community management and the technology Thanks. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I'm Toby. Um, I'm fortunate, and I've spent the last couple of years working um, with nothing but Rails. Um, but um, I've come to um, expect Ruby to work a certain way because of that. And every once in a while, I open IRB and um, start typing five dot minutes dot ago. And then it gets confused because it doesn't know what I'm talking about. So my question is: Did you um, do you um, did you consider to bundle uh, active support and these kind of a little of bit slower, please? Pardon me. A little bit slower, please. Yes. Um, did you um, consider bundling active support of Rails with Ruby? Uh huh. Uh, the some of the active support is getting me one nine, but like simple two clock, oh, but. I don't know, but I think the the two days ago not getting in the the core language. <laughs> oh, okay.
Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I don't have a technical question as such, as you've probably come to expect. Um, I'm curious, what do you think about people who are not programmers in their background who learn Ruby as a first language? Would you recommend that or would you not? And if so, why? Well, the Ruby is primarily designed for the programmer just because I am a programmer, then it will be designed for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for, for that reason, the Ruby has a, we has a very sharp corner, so it might not be best suitable for the, 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 the introductory programmer. But you know, the, it's, it's kind of policy. You know, the, when you, the, some parents don't give their children a sharp knife. <laughs> <laughs> but some does, some do. <laughs> And uh, the, in, I've heard that a lot of people that, that learn programming through Ruby and very successful. So it could be very possible to study programming from Ruby. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Uh, I'm Greg. Uh, actually, my question is about the Ruby standard library and sort of what you feel the role of change in the standard library will be in the future. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of really good things in Ruby standard library, but there's also a lot of redundancy. There's a lot of libraries that, you know, they have third party you know, equivalents that are much better. And it seems like sometimes the change in the standard library is slower than what you might expect. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see happening in the future with that? I mean, we've, just a, two, a couple of examples are we've got several options parsing libraries that are competing within the standard library. Mm -hmm. And we also have something like csv.rb where faster csv is pretty much the de facto standard for Rubyists. Uh, how do you see the standard library evolving over time? Uh, the, I, well, it's kind of the conflicting feeling, you know. The diversity is is a good thing in general. So, so the competing libraries can be good things to accomplish the, the data technology. But at the same time, the diversity can cause confusion. So, I I feel like it's good, but sometimes it's troublesome. So. But my question is, if you're not actively, you know, watching over the standard library and making mm -hmm. decisions about that, do you think perhaps someone should be, I mean, do you think there should be tighter control over that? I think that it seems like the focus is entirely on the core right now, and the standard library is creating a situation where, you know, a new Rubyist might use csv.rb mm -hmm. when most Rubyists would use faster csv, or like you said, the, the diversity causes some sort of confusion. And I mean, part of the notion of standard library would be to standardize things. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> well, I wish, I wish the, the library people will the coordinate before creating the conflicting project, but, but I couldn't stop, I, I can't stop, stop them, but I wish they could coordinate better than Better now. But what happens when they attempt to and then it doesn't happen? I, I, I guess what I'm saying is who's responsible for Ruby Standard Library ultimately? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well if, if I knew about the, the everything, I can the, make a, the proper decision for everything. But, you know, the, like the, the, the command line person library, I just, just couldn't decide which is the, the best one at the, at the time. And uh, that's the reason we have the several in, in our standard distribution. But the <coughs> we, we are going to remove something, some, some of them to, to separate them. They're not bound anymore. So, and, so uh, 
Yeah, yeah. At, at that the, point, it would be get up long with the, the the one of the the can gates, so it, it's going to be out in there. Okay, thank you. Hi, Matt. Uh, my name is Laurent, and I have a question regarding 1.9. Um, it's about name arguments. Mm -hmm. I saw it a few months ago on the RubyDev mailing list that there was a discussion about name arguments, but there was only a few emails and then nothing else. I just wanted to know the status of mm -hmm. supporting name, name arguments or keyed arguments in Ruby 1.9. Mm -hmm. The name, the we decided to name the argument not in the one nine just because it's too cute for the timing. So it's it's left for with Ruby two, and uh, but we we will support the 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 order to the hash and the name hash in line. So. It could be emulated using the hash table for the time being. Yeah, the problem with the hash table is that you can, it's not possible to have multiple arguments with the same key. No. And this is the only problem we have with hash. No, so yeah. that, that, that's too bad for the, the object <laughs> oh, to see. And if we, if we write a patch to support name parameters for 1.9, would you uh, accept it or? The, are you going to write the, mm. the name name argument? Yeah, uh, if we if we try uh, to, I'm not sure yet. It, the, you know, just just because of compatibility. If it's it's compatible enough in, to merge in the one nine series, that it could be successful. Okay. If, if not, they wait for we need to wait for Ruby two for two dot zero. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're on the last of the questions here, so if you're not up here now, too bad. Wait till tomorrow. Too bad. Yeah, uh, I'm Dave, and uh, l last year, uh, inter internationalization was a really hot topic. Unicode. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I, I still want to, I'd like to know where is that officially from you today in, uh, Incorporating it into future versions of Ruby, U Unicode, and inter international mm -hmm. internationalization. The one I include the Unicode support, the full Unicode support, and uh, what I will explain tomorrow, I guess. Okay. okay. Hello, I'm David, and. I have a question about book publishing in Japan. Do you remember um, five years, was it five years ago in 2002, um, Takahashi, you brought the, <laughs> the boxes of books. Do you remember that all 23 books that were then in print about Ruby in Japan? Mm -hmm. There were you know three about CGI programming and there were ones about how to learn programming through Ruby and all the things that we now think w wouldn't that be great to do. Um, I'm just curious, actually. I mean, it's you know, obviously the English language publishing has taken hold. There's a lot of Ruby books and more coming out. I'm just curious, for my own personal interest, what what's happening in Japan now? I mean, are, are those books still around? Are there three times as many books? Are there you know fewer? But what what's the what's the book scene in <laughs> Ruby in Japan? Uh, I stopped counting on it. <laughs> and uh, what are the that the at the time of two, year two, 2002, the, the publisher sent, sent me a copy of the, the book, but not, these days, they, they don't send me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> then they, I don't know. The, when, when I go to the nearby bookstore in a, in a small town, I see at least several Ruby books on, in, in the store, so it's pretty common in maybe, maybe 50, 60, I don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. Okay, thanks. Hey, Mats, uh, we're two students from Duke University, and we were wondering if um, you, know, you believe that Ruby should be taught at a 
at universities and replace them into a language like Java or, you know, um, if in Japan they're teaching Ruby in universities? Uh, some universities taking their course in Ruby. Uh, for example, the, the, the Tokyo University took Ruby for the, the, their primary programming course and uh, some other universities as well. Great, thanks. I'm Jim Fries. I'm asking a question, two questions uh, by proxy for Steve Rogers. He wants to know what kind of programming do you do day to day? And what kind of programming do you do day to day? Uh, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to know what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Favorite movie. Movie. Oh, wow. Matrix. <laughs> okay. Thanks for all the great questions and the others. Um, <laughs> and uh, most of all, thank you to Mats. Another round of applause, please. And that is it for the evening. So uh, we'll see you back here at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and have a good night. Thank you.